Hello everybody, welcome to the next part of this tutorial series. So in the last episode, uh, we have added a setting section, a background to our game and also implemented a style sheet. So today we won't really be adding any new content, we will mainly just be talking about uh, clicker and idle game design tips because, well, in the words of Reggie, if it's not fun, why bother, right? <coughs> so, let's just get right into it, I won't bore you with the details. So my first point is, my first tip really is to be creative, right? So creativity. Now this point varies greatly by the style of your game. For example, in Cookie Clicker all the buildings make sense as to how they make more cookies even if they aren't realistically plausible. And a really creative idea in Cookie Clicker is for example the JavaScript engine or the antimatter condenser. Uh, it's something the player wouldn't really consider at the start of the game, but is really pleasantly surprised by later on in the game. So what I'm saying is uh, add unique buildings that correspond to your game style, add unique upgrades that correspond to your game style, and really just add the unexpected and interesting things as the game progresses that the player wouldn't really expect. So for my second point is Rewarding progression. Add new interesting mechanics as the game progresses and this is extremely important in every idle or clicker game a player plays. Now what you don't want to happen is the game becoming well boring in the late game and really to prove a point I'm going to ask you a question. What is the difference between a thousand cash and a thousand, I don't know, tradicillion cash in a clicker game? Well, unless the game changes significantly in the late game there isn't really a difference. And that's also what I call the paradigm shift principle. And what this really means is to make your game significantly different in the late game compared to the early game and of course more interesting as well. So this is very important, do not sleep on this. Okay, for my third point is incentive to play. Give the player an objective to work towards immediately at the beginning. Now this can either be a small objective like buying the next uh, building or upgrade but I think what actually works better is to give the player a bigger objective such as a really expensive progression upgrade or well, basically something to pique their curiosity with. Now an idle game maker game that does this really well in my opinion is Wall Destroyer which is also one of the most classic idle game maker games. It's actually made in one of the oldest versions of idle game maker but it's, all, it's still very popular and I actually booted up Wall Destroyer to show you. Oh, here it is. So, and you can immediately see that the game fascinates you with the option to buy this right here, destroy wall. And it's insanely expensive, right? Immediately as you start the game. Insanely expensive, it costs a trillion damage. But it says that it gives 25 bricks and is worth one cosmic knowledge. And immediately this makes the player ask themselves a question like what are bricks what is cosmic knowledge and they want the answer to that so they will keep playing until they find out what bricks do and what isn't really cosmic knowledge now if you want to play this game i've actually linked it in the description it's one of the most content heavy games um, i think made really <laughs> in idle game maker so yeah if you want to play it i linked it in the description but yeah, just give your player an objective to work towards immediately at the beginning. So, the fourth point is curiosity. Make players curious by making your game unpredictable. Now, what I mean by making your game unpredictable is to have the player not uh, be able uh, to predict what is going to be the next building, upgrade and so on. Basically, don't make all your buildings or upgrades the same thing, but simply better. For example, you shouldn't uh, just make all your buildings or upgrades the same name but just a higher level because the player has nothing to look forward to and this makes the game predictable and effectively boring and honestly the player might even assume that that's all the game has to offer so try our best to avoid that so our fifth point is impact make purchases meaningful and this is pretty important as well the number one thing you want to avoid is having the player feel like uh, their purchase that they have waited for a longer time didn't really change anything at all and for this reason I really enjoy games with less but more quality content than games with more but less quality content and I think this is also what uh, 
at least in my opinion, Cookie Clicker and plenty of other idle games fail at in the late game is that, well, the purchases at that point aren't really that meaningful. Our sixth point is strategy. Give players meaningful choices. So what this means is to usually have at least three meaningful choices that your player can make. For example, this can mean playing more of an idle playstyle or choosing whether to buy an upgrade or a building. It could also be something like choosing where to go for an achievement or to save up for a, you know, a, an upgrade or a building. It could also be choosing which upgrade to buy if they can buy multiple ones. Uh, you know, basically something to min-max their production and give them a way of playing according to their playstyle. Okay, so for our seventh point is first impressions. Make the game look nice and professional. And try our best to avoid typos or grammatically incorrect sentences. And of course, add icons if you can. So this is also really important because most players are not going to play a game that looks stylistically bad or ugly. Even though it might be the most content heavy game on earth. So, try your best to avoid typos or grammatically incorrect sentences and add icons if you can. We will get into adding icons in future episodes, but you add them in pretty much the same way that we added the background in the last episode, so don't worry about that. Now, last but not least, our eighth point is obvious progression. The player should never be confused how to progress. And this is pretty self-explanatory, just try to make your game's progression obvious, and always try your best to avoid having the player feeling confused on how to progress, because they might assume that they have already completed the game even though they might not even be close and just stop playing the game altogether. <clears throat> so yeah, give your game obvious progression. Alright, now with our game design tips covered, let's talk a little bit about Coin Mania game design, also known as the game that we'll be creating. So, the primary resource for spending will be coins. It's going to be a rather short but still meaningful game and the end goal will be to buy the legendary coin trophy and officially become the richest coin collector in the world. So if you want to you can add some of your ideas here as well but let's now get to the interesting part and introduce you to your first challenge. There will be more challenges in the future of course all of them are optional but I would really like if you at least gave this one a go. So. Your challenge is to think up creative buildings slash upgrades ideas for Coin Mania and how they will help produce coins. Of course, no need to add them yet. And share your ideas in the comments. I would love to read your ideas. Honestly, if they're if I really like them, I might even add them to the game myself and even shout you out. So definitely share your ideas in the comments. I would love to read them. So that should be it for this episode. In the next one, we'll finally be adding some content to our game. You will learn about thing keys and basically what things are, components, their effects, their properties, and so on and so forth. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Really helps me with the algorithm. <laughs> and of course, if you're generous enough and you really like my content and what I do here, you can check out my Patreon linked in the description. It has some pretty nice perks as well, and it would make me extremely happy. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode.